in this lecture, we're going to continue our study of classes, and we're going to look at subclassing your existing classes and how you can split your code into different files to have things more organized. Let's head to Cookie Creator, create a project to play with this things. Okay, here we are in Qt Creator. We're going to copy the entire source code we have here from the last lecture. Create a new project as we did before. We're going to call this one time classes three. We're going to store it in the usual location. Hit next until we have our project generated. We're going to get read of all we have in here and put in our own class. And we have the state we had in the previous lecture. What we want to do in this lecture is to create a new class. Our class is going to be a square class. And as you know, a square is a particular case of a rectangle where the width is equal to the length. So we're going to create our class like this, class square public rectangle, okay? And you do it just like this. Now you have a class that extends the rectangle and uh, it inherits everything from the public space of the rectangle class. So we inherit these methods, we can use them, and these methods are going to work on this private members. Okay, so what we can do from now is provide a constructor for our square class. Okay, we're going to say public because we want it to be accessible outside. The constructor is going to be square and we pass in a parameter of side because the width is going to be equal to the length. So we should specify one side here. And one way to initialize this is to go inside here and call set width side and call set length side. This is totally fine and it's going to work. But a better way is to use an initializer list on the parent class and initialize that directly. And the way you can do that is to come here, put a colon here. And uh, as you know, the parent class for this is rectangle. So we call it and call it custom constructor method that we have defined in a previous lecture. And we're going to pass side as the width and side as the length. And this is going to work totally fine. So we're going to build this to see that we have no problem. And you see that the build is successful. There is no error. Notice that we didn't define a method to get the area here. The method is coming from the rectangle class. So we're going to create an object of our square class. And we have to specify the side. What do we pass in here? Let's pass in 40. And we're going to say C out the area of your square is get area. Okay. We are calling this method from the square, but square doesn't define this method. It is inheriting this method from the rectangle class that we have defined on top here. Okay, you see the method here. So let's run the application and see that we get 1600 as the area of our rectangle. Fingers crossed. And the area of your square is um, 1600. This is really okay. Our class is working as we expected. Okay, now I think we have enough information about classes. What we're going to do next is to try and split this program into different uh, files so that it is more compact and easy to maintain. Looking at this thing, imagine if you had like uh, 100 classes and having them in one file is going to be a nightmare. You don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is close out all these things because they are just making things difficult for us to see. I am going to minimize all these other projects. I want to only see this one we are working on. Okay. 
So we want to provide a header file for every class that we have in here and provide a CPP file for every class. We're going to have two files for the rectangle class because it has things defined outside the class. So we're going to have a CPP file for this. But if you look at the para class, it only has things in the class and these things are going to go in the header and the same thing applies to the square class. So let's go ahead and create a new file. We click on the project here and uh, we're going to say add new C++ header file. So we call this rectangle. And we have our file here. So what we're going to do is come in our class and copy the entire class from the main file that we were working on. So we're going to copy it and comment it out because I don't want to get it from here. You might need to look at it. And we go to the rectangle class and put our things inside. The next thing we want to do is to define another file for the declarations of the methods and it's going to be a source file. We're also going to call it rectangle. Next, finish. And you see that we have a file that is called rectangle.cpp. We are adding our classes from here so that Qt Creator adds them to the PRO file for us. And you can see they are in here. So we go back to the main function, copy the code that we want to get rid of here. So it is from here up to here to the other constructor. So we copy the code and comment out everything inside here. This is messy, isn't it? So let's delete this because it's going to live in there anyway. Get rid of this and get rid of this. We don't need it. So we're going to say include, we're going to include the header file rectangle.h and inside here, we are going to put our declarations for the methods in the class of rectangle. And right now, we have no instance of rectangle inside the main class. So we should import it because it should be used in here. So we're going to say include rectangle. Now we have rectangle recognized inside our main file. The next thing we want to do is to define a file for this para class. So we're going to copy it. We're going to cut it out actually. Hit add new C++ header file. Choose this. The header is going to say para. And we're going to put our class in here. Okay. You notice that this class is going to use the rectangle. So we should include that one in here. So we say include para dot h okay we should so we say include rectangle dot h and you see that the rectangle is recognized now we go back to the main function do the same thing for the square class we cut it out click on the project add new header file, we're going to name it square, next, and we're going to put our code in here. The square is going to use our rectangle too, so we should include the rectangle in here, and it should be recognized by now. Okay, one thing we forgot is that everywhere you have the C out here, 
you should include IO stream because it is that that gives us the ability to do C out. So we should include IO stream here and say using namespace STD, what we do here. So we're going to do the same. Um, we're not outputting anything in the header file for the rectangle, but we we are not outputting anything in the square class either. So we go in the rectangle file and do the same thing. So we should include IO stream. And say using namespace STD because we are doing a C log here. This is shouldn't be very hard using namespace STD. Okay, we have our classes split into different files. This is good. You see that the main function now is really about instantiating things we want and doing the actual work with the classes. The defining of classes and what they do should be in these files here. So we've done quite a lot of changes in this lecture. Let's build to see if we didn't introduce any errors in the code here. Okay, you see that in main they say para was not defined, square was not defined. We need to import them here. The same way we imported the rectangle class. So we should say include para.h include square.h. Okay, so they are defined here. Now they are recognizable. Let's build the application again seems that all is working as it should. Let's run it, fingers crossed. And boom, we have our things as we had before. But now our code is really clean and classes are concerned with things that they do. We are not polluting the main file with things that are really specific to every class. So from now on, when you define a class, you should really try to put them in a separate file and use them wherever else you need them. That's going to give you an easy time when you are really working with your code because things are going to be neat and organized. Okay, we've covered quite a lot about classes so far. We're going to stop here with classes. In the next lecture, we're going to build our very first UI application in Qt. I can't wait to see you there.